What's going on guys? Dr. D here from the OneHive 2.0 family bringing you a war recap from a recent friendly war that we that Swarm had with American Savage. Uh, this was a great war. It came right down to the wire, uh, tied up in stars, and we wound up coming away with the percent. Uh, for those who don't know, American Savage is a sister clan of Tactical Inc. It's a great group. I would really encourage you guys to go and check them out. Um, okay, let's uh, hop into some of these war attacks. So here are the war statistics from the uh, American Savage uh, arranged war. You can see that it was a pretty even match, 83 to 83. Uh, we edged them out by just over 1%. Um, it was, a, it was a, a very fun war. You can see we each had 23 uh, three stars. Um, two stars were the same, one stars were the same, everything was exactly the same. In fact, even when you look at uh, the bases here, you'll, you'll see that what uh, happened is we were able to two-star um, all of their, both of their uh, uh, 11s and all of their 10s with a few uh, Town Hall 10 triples. Um, we left a Town Hall 9 open. <clears throat> Uh, similarly, they had a couple of Town Hall 10 triples, left a Town Hall 9 open. Um, now, we did not intentionally leave a Town Hall 9 open. We had a, a bully attack that, that failed on this Town Hall 9. Uh, however, we uh, got lucky because they did intentionally leave a Town Hall 9 open. Um, Brutalism here decided to uh, hit uh, Yako or Jocko. Uh, instead of clearing a Town Hall 9, and that Town Hall 11 could have easily cleared a Town Hall 9, and that would have given them 84. Uh, we kind of lucked out there, um, walk away with the percent win. It was a great war, and it was, a, it was a lot of fun arranging with you guys, and hopefully we can do it again uh, sometime here in the future. Uh, okay, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the war attacks. We're going to start um, with the attack on number one. Um, this was actually the second hit, and it was by Jocko. Now, uh, the first hit um, tried to zap quake this um, air defense and failed. And so we talked about, hey, you, you've got to get that zap quake on that air defense. If you're gonna, if you're gonna miss something, uh, let it be. Uh, that archer tower, not the air defense. Um, so uh, he's coming in here with a queen walk, uh, pops the ability there, um, and uses a rage. He's going to wind up having to use a second rage on the queen here as well, uh, but is is able to clear um, a good side over here. And, and the, the purpose of, of clearing this side is he's going to bring dragons. He's going to bring them right down this way towards that town hall. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so second rage is going to be coming down here in just a second. Uh, once he does, he's going to uh, zap quake this um, AD over here. And there it goes. And now, yep, there it goes. Uh, now in come the dragons. Uh, nice, he was able to get a little bit of percent off of that. Uh, town Hall with the Quake. Uh, starts by setting his funnel up here with the Baby Dragon and the um, Barbarian King. Um, trying to get rid of those high HP buildings so that the uh, dragons won't get stuck on them. And in with the Hound and a couple of loons. That blower was um, a bit of a problem, but not terrible. Uh, as soon as he gets through that air defense, Rage comes down, or right right as he's getting to the air defense, Rage comes down. CC is out at this point, doesn't matter. Just needs to get that Town Hall. You can see he's already at 54%. And there goes the Town Hall. Well, in a second here. There it goes. Uh, winds up getting 60% on this, or maybe, no, I think it's exactly 60%. I don't think these dragons are going to get anything else here. <clears throat> But that's what we got to do. Uh, wars are won by Town Hall 10s uh, getting two stars on Town Hall 11s and Town Hall 11s getting three stars on Town Hall 10s. Now, hopefully that changes. There is um, some balancing that's supposed to be coming out in the next uh, few days. And we're hoping that, uh, especially at Town Hall 10, we see some balancing. Um, let's have a look at this. Now, uh, TU is Town Hall 11. Um, and this is a clearing of a 
uh, Town Hall 10, which is no longer uh, a sure thing at, uh, with, with Town Hall 11. Uh, this is actually an attack that Trumpy has been using an awful lot. Um, TU busts in with some wall breakers, and it is wizards and um, bowlers. And the idea is uh, double jump to get into the center and out of the center, and then just keep as many troops in that core as possible. When you've got an open core like this, um, bowlers can be in there, and they can get access to an awful lot of uh, defenses as long as they're in that core throwing rocks out of it. So jumps out, uh, has, has used the um, Grand Warden's ability and the King's ability. King is now down, but the Grand Warden is still up uh, full, full strength, and the Queen is still up full strength and has not used her ability yet. Um, she's going to have to pop the Queen's ability here pretty quickly. There it goes. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of base left, but look at all of these skellies. They just are ripping through stuff. Um, this is one of the great things um, with these max witches is those those skeletons are fantastic at distracting troops, just like what's going on right there with the um, with that archer tower. Sorry about that. My fantasy football stuff is popping up. Um, and, and the troops just continue working their way across. Uh, Big Bomb does some huge damage to those bowlers, and then uh, one splash damage from a mortar, and they're gone. Um, but got one bowler and uh, about 60 uh, skellies out there. Uh, not really 60, but a lot of skellies out there. Um, and really only two point defenses left. Queen is now down, um, so it's going to rely on skellies to distract and a wizard and a uh, single bowler um, to get these things down. And we'll speed it up here just a little bit because he is going to get this. Um, there we go. Uh, winds up getting that last cannon. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job to you. All right, let's hop down and have a look at number 11. This was a hit by Iggy. <coughs> And I, I say it all the time, I love to see uh, Mass Dragon hits, and Iggy is one of the best at them. Uh, so he does a um, Zap Quake on the, on the air defense up there. Doesn't get that blower down or that uh, sweeper down, unfortunately. Um, notice, though, uh, the, these bases, I mean, we continue seeing them with air defenses that are really, really exposed and um, bows on ground, and I, I think it's in an attempt to draw an air attack, but to draw a Lava Loon air attack, not a Dragon attack. Um, and this winds up being a very, very powerful attack. Just using a single Dragon up there to set his funnel, um, kill these CC troops quick. And here comes the Mass Dragons, and they are just going to walk across this base. He's got a CC Hound, which he's going to drop as soon as those dragons get close enough to start taking damage from the air defense. There it goes. There's perfect timing on that CC Hound. And he's still got two Rages left. I mean, this is, this is pretty awesome. He's gotten uh, three of those air defenses out and two Rages. And one goes down right there. Has not pulled out the second rage yet. Still sitting on it. And that's because he's got a lot of point defenses here and a lot of HP that those dragons are going to have to work their way through. And that can be a scary situation for dragons. Oh, two black bombs um, just knocked out a huge chunk of his dragons' health. But uh, he winds up pushing through here. Uh, waits until those. Um, Teslas are distracted by uh, dragons and then drops a couple of loons to get rid of those Teslas. Uh, they do their job, and that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Iggy. All right. Let's have a look at 13. So 13 was a hit by Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell is... Um, Fairly new to the uh, uh, to the clan, 
Um, and you can see he has got a Bolalo coming in here. We're going to speed this up a little bit. Um, it's a very nice entry that he's got. He realizes there's no splash damage on that right side. He's able to get in there with <coughs> uh, wall breakers and has a, a beautiful funnel set there. Look at how wide that funnel is. Bowlers are not going to walk when a funnel is, is like that. Uh, these guys ran a lot of CC hounds. Um, there was a time when I loved seeing a CC hound pop out. Now I hate seeing CC hounds pop out. They slow attacks down. If you're doing a queen walk, it's just <laughs> kills me. Um, but uh, at any rate, two of the air defenses are down. Uh, that's your basic goal with this. And in comes two... Uh, both hounds on that first uh, air defense. You want to time it preferably so that that first one is about ready to pop as, as the second one gets there. That's exactly what happens. You can see kind of messed up a little bit, got some loons uh, ahead of themselves there. Uh, wow, two back black bombs um, and that uh, air defense took down that hound really, really quickly. Fortunately, he's got a queen here and she is going to move in here and take out that First of all, that blower, which kind of does him some good, actually. It pushes those uh, loons a bit back a bit away from that air defense. And finally, there they go. Uh, so all out of balloons, but uh, still has um, plenty of cleanup troops. And this is going to be tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Mitchell. I'm going to check out Plundering Pete here. So, um, Plundering Pete is uh, coming with a blue veiler, and I'm, I'm putting together a video on the blue veiler. I've been working with some different types of compositions here, uh, seeing if I can cut back on some of these um, healers. Now, you see that he only dropped three healers with his queen. Um, I always prefer four healers with my queen. Uh, even under Rage, it's very hard for that queen to stay at a, at a decent amount of health if she's taken um, point, uh, point defense damage, at least from, from one or two point defenses. Uh, sets his funnel, though, nice, and this is actually what's kind of uh, required to make this thing work, right? You've got to have a very good funnel um, because you're bringing troops that um, just love to scatter. Bowlers love to scatter. Valks love to scatter, as they're doing there. Um, but the, the, the trick to this um, strategy is getting healers to lock on to those Valks. Now, ideally, you keep healers on both your bowlers and your Valks. You can see at this point he's down to two bowlers, unfortunately. But uh, all of his healers are up. Uh, drops a heal on those uh, Valks. Um, probably didn't need to drop that there. Uh, Might have done a little bit better with a the Rage. There comes the Rage and they start ripping through stuff very, very quickly. Uh, when you're doing the, the blue veiler, um, my preference is to save that heal for heavy point defense areas, such as this right here, um, because you're taking damage from multiple Teslas. Uh, if there's a Tesla farm, then, and I know it, then I definitely try and hold it for that. Um, these, these are the things. So Clutch is, is uh, he's the leader of Swarm, and just fantastic when it comes to this blue veiler attack. And uh, that's, that's one of the things that he talks about, is being effective with the use of that heal. Um, and, and boy, you've got to make sure that your funnel is on point with this thing. Um, I watch Clutch uh, triple with this strategy all the time, and I was really struggling with it. And, uh, he, he, uh, he and I worked, worked a bit on it, and um, I, I, I started to really, really like this attack so so overpowered right now this and bolalo are are two of the kind of most uh op town hall nine attacks that i've seen in a while all right nice job wondering pete oops oh <laughs> i had two of his picked out here uh we're gonna skip over that one and we're gonna jump down here to 19. all right so this is Alpha Dog. Alpha's currently a recruit. This was his first war with us. Um, and uh, this is kind of nice. So puts his queen down, and you can see he's got a queen walk coming here. And a, um, a uh, Gova 
excuse me, Govajo. Uh, he's got something in that CC that we don't see very often anymore. And that is a Max Golem. And he went with a Max Golem uh, for both attacks. Uh, second attack didn't work out uh, as well, but uh, this attack worked out quite nicely. Um, so, comes in with a Queen Walk, uh, Hog down, lures the CC out, uh, throws another Hog there, which is unnecessary. Um, <laughs> really risky with that Queen. Uh, he, he likes to let that Queen sit, um, and I am not a big fan of that. In fact, uh, in, his, in his second attack, uh, he lost his queen to the CC, and when that happens, the attack is just done. Um, you, use your poison, use your rage, just do it. It's 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 worth it. Um, I know a lot of people want want to try and save those things, but um, in the end, uh, more often than not, I feel like trying to save those results in a lost queen. So, uh, Valks are coming in here. You can see the funnel is set nicely. He's got his golem there. Um, and they rip right through. Golem is tanking well. Uh, Queen is going to work her way in there. Eventually she'll work her way in there. Uh, king is just off doing his own thing. Um, Valks, uh, as, the, as the king distracts there a bit, uh, <laughs> Valks rip in and get that queen. Very nice jump spell placement. Um, just, a, just a nice, slow, methodical attack here. Um, now he gets, unfortunately... Uh, those healers stuck on that golem, and it happens. Um, you get healers stuck on golems all the time, but that was such a perfect jump placement. Look at all of the value that those Valks were able to get. This compartment, this compartment, got the queen, now they're up here. So lots of great value out of those Valks. Um, ripping through here, we've got just a couple of point defenses, and finally he starts bringing in hogs on those point defenses. And this is GG. It's it's a very nice attack. So, three stars in the bag. Good job, Alpha Dog. All right. And we are gonna watch one more here. This is a very cool attack by Adam. So we don't see this all that often over here, but um, what we've got coming here is a P.E.K.K.A. Smash with three P.E.K.K.A.s and seven um, Baby Dragons. So obviously with P.E.K.K.A.s, <laughs> uh, like Bowlers and like Valks, need to be able to set a, a very good funnel um, before you uh, try doing anything crazy. And so uh, that's what he's doing here, using those Baby Dragons and a Wizard to set a funnel that he can push straight in towards that first air defense. Um, he's got bowlers in the CC, and he's going to pull those bowlers out as soon as there's no place for them to go but in. Right there. Um, the goal is to destroy that first air defense quickly so that your um, healers are not taking too much damage. That's what he does. Goes straight down, poisons the CC, and... Now those healers are, are able to just keep everything healed up for a long time here because they stay completely out of the range of all of these air defenses. Um, works out just, just beautifully. Uh, bowlers are still alive. Pekkas are all still alive. And these healers, of course, uh, switch, switch it up, and they, they move to hit troops that are taking damage. And so... Um, the healers are taking a little bit of heat right there, and finally, bowlers take out that air defense. They're going to start taking some from this air defense over here, but as you can see, there's two point defenses left. He's got baby dragons down cleaning everything up. Um, all of his P.E.K.K.A.s are still alive. Queen is still up. King is still up. Haven't even used their abilities yet. Just a very overpowered attack. Um, nothing on the field now that can hurt any of his troops except for some, perhaps some uh, traps, spring traps, or or something along that uh, nature, but that is it. Um, a couple of swag hero abilities, and it is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Adam. All right, so uh, there it is. Once again, uh, you know, a great war with these guys, um, and hopefully we can uh, do this again sometime. Um, take it easy. This is Dr. D signing out. Clash on.